Hello, my friends. It's time again for some questions. It's um, awfully nice of you to send in these questions, and I appreciate it very much. And uh, I'll do my best to try to work my way through here. Robert Arias, Arias uh, says, in your opinion, what is the level of probability that the Federal Reserve or the IRS eventually will cease to exist? Uh, um, Martin Armstrong says that the Federal Reserve is going to hang on for uh, a good while, that the other central banks uh, are going to start to fail sometime soon. And, uh, and I think uh, Cliff High also uh, have suggested that the other central banks are going to, to start to fail. Uh, but uh, unlike the, the, the other central banks are, uh, are not privately held they're uh, essentially as i understand it at least is uh, owned by the governments and so they're different than the federal reserve and so uh, apparently by these guys at least uh, they will continue that said uh and and that's a a, a good example of a uh, straight line kind of projection it says now let me introduce a, a variable in here for you martin armstrong uh the, the great forecaster who has a, a computer program that he designed based upon the cyclical nature of how be, reality works uh which has never been wrong and is amazing in terms of calling where the market the financial markets and other such things uh, presidential elections and, and so on. It's very broad in terms of its uh, uh, intake and what it uh, and and what it reports. Martin Armstrong has said, and this is important, that between 2025 and 2027, there's going to be a global civil war. Uh, if you've not heard that term before, you don't know what it means because. Every time you've heard civil war, it's been a national civil war, two factions that are trying to fight each other, conflict within to try to dominate within a nation. So when he first said that, I heard him talk about that down in Florida, just the annual convention. It uh, kind of took me aback because I sat there and said, I don't know what that means. And I thought about it for a couple of weeks and then it became clear, clear to me. He said that, that there is going to be a, a global, a general global uprising of people across the planet against their governments. That's what a global civil war is. And um, you don't have to look very far to see all of the beginnings of what easily could turn into something like that. I mean, all you gotta do is watch how Canada came apart. Uh, it, I mean, there was a body blow to the psyche of the, of the Canadians, uh, the way their government treated them. Never again. I mean, they, the whole thing is, it's, they're reeling from a kind of a psychological point of view because they, they would never have guessed that their government would have done that to them. And so that message is going to trans go across the southern, their southern border into the United States and all other kind of places. And anyway, there's a whole lot of things that are converging to suggest that that's a very real possibility. So answer me this. If, now remember, this starts at 2025 to 2027 is when this war started. Now, you, something like that doesn't just happen it starts to come together and you could easily make the case that uh, 18 months before this thing comes unglued that it starts to become really kind of clear like in canada that um, something really un unusual a very anomalous is happen is going to happen and you start losing confidence in your government. I mean, that's the basis of why, why there would be this uprising against the government. When the remote viewers uh, uh, call it a betrayal, there's a broad based sense of uh, betrayal around the world by people against their governments. So if you start to feel like you've been screwed by the government, 
Are you going to pay your taxes? Are you going to give them money? These people who have done this to you? Well, of course you're not. And if you have any kind of sense that this thing's going to get a whole lot worse and it might, and particularly if you got a sense that it might just come apart, you're not going to throw much, good, you know, good money after that. And so what's going to happen is that you get this growing erosion that goes of the, and the inability of government to be able to deal with, you know, provide, provide the services and do the kinds of things that they need to or want to. Uh, and so that, so if you, if you roll that in on top, if you roll that in on top of all of this, then uh, who knows what's going to happen to the Federal Reserve and certainly to the IRS because I wouldn't pay taxes if I thought the government was going to fail. I mean, that's, that just makes sense. And there's, so there's probably a lot of people that have come to that conclusion as well. So, and by the way, if that happens that way, then, then it's, a, it's extraordinary. <clears throat> I can say to you, as Mark, Armstrong says that by 2032, there will be no United States. There will be four, five, six different countries in North America. And you can hear those words and have them go by your head and you can say, that makes sense. I understand. I understand what that means. And you don't even begin to understand the underlying significance of what that means. Because when the United States of America collapses and it does so in a really relatively short period of time it generates the most chaos and uncertainty in the craziest period of time in history cliff highs talks about it as being uh, undescribably chaotic and uh, and uses these superlative kind of terms about the whole thing and so uh it's uh, we're in we're in for a very interesting ride in the next uh, few years, handful of years. Uh, my friend Ray Butler from over in uh, the UK says, uh, "I've become interested in biblical prophecy. Some well-known people are saying that there are similarities between what's happening now and what is described in the Bible. Do you believe some end-time prophecies from the Bible could be rolling out now and uh, has to do with the?" Uh, and has to do with what this whole thing is about. Okay. Um, uh, yes and no, I guess. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, there's, there's certain, first of all, the whole thing is based upon interpretation, right? Because it's all symbolic and most of it's built around Rebel, the book of Revelations and where you got white horses and black horses and, you know, and all of these things. And you got, you know, you got it. It's, it's a little bit like Nostradamus where you're trying to do this interpretation of a, kind of all these sim symbols and it's not, obvious it's not clear necessarily what they are and so i grew up in a very conservative uh, religious background and i distinctly remember all these sermons that were you know where they told me what the russia was the red horse or the whatever the, i don't know the bear from the north like or yeah i forget it i forget it all interestingly enough because i had to memorize old books of the bible when i was a kid in high school but uh and so and it always seemed like a little bit of a reach to me and it still does uh that uh, somebody knows for sure what all of these things mean it's uh, complicated in terms of the bible because uh the history of the bible and the fact that uh, uh a lot of the, you know, there's a clear compromise at the council at Nicaea uh, where Constantine, was it Constantine? Uh, yeah, I, whoever the emperor was at the time. Uh, essentially, all of the bishops were arguing about what ought to be put into the Bible. And, uh, you know, 
they didn't like this and they didn't like that and so on and they never could come to an answer and uh, what i read says that uh, he finally got ran out of uh ran out of patience and said okay you you got till monday and when you and if you haven't figured this out by monday then i start killing one bishop a day until you figure this until you come to a conclusion and so they rather rapidly came to a conclusion about what ought to be in but they did and so there was a lot of argument and uh, then there's all kinds of questions about uh what well, then be you know how they manipulated the information uh the uh, uh the russian uh researcher the statistician who's name escapes me at the moment, Anatoly Flamenco, uh, uh, Flamin Flamenco, Flamenco, anyway, Flamenco, it's kind of not a Flamingo, it's Flamen Flamenco, uh, has uh, put a whole bunch of guys, 150, something like that, uh, scientists from the Soviet Union, from the Academy of Science, and uh, this in, in Russia, not the Soviet Union. And they uh, spent a great deal of time scientifically trying to go back and confirm the major aspects of history as it's written and as it's been passed down. History has all just been passed down from one story to another one. I know there's, a, there's only one, that, and it all comes from one uh, original uh, document uh, that uh, and that talks about things that happened much earlier, and Flamenco, who was who started to relate all of these events that were talked about to star patterns and other things that would give you specific kind of years and dates and times, because what they apparently used to do is put on the documents uh, what the stars and the planets looked like at the time. Uh, uh, and he went back and looked at the thing and, and has written, I think, seven uh, books that are very compelling and convincing you that, uh, that the Catholic Church essentially is inserted a thousand years into the middle of all this. The Dark Ages, the reason why they're dark is because they kind of got stuck in there and there's no history to talk about them. And, uh, and they did that because it, it, they needed it to to provide continuity in terms of the, the religious uh, dogma that they uh, that they're pitching it at the time, and so there's a lot of questions about uh, how this all put how it all goes together and uh, the validity of, in my mind at least, the validity of those sources, and aggravated of course by the interp the necessary interpretation of these sim symbol sets. And uh, yeah, could be, uh, but I don't know. I don't understand how to do it. So good luck, Ray. <laughs> all right, my friends, that's all. But thank you. And we'll do this again next, uh, next month. Please send along any question you, that you have. I'll do my best to answer it. These are amazing times. I really mean that. I mean, this is really big stuff that's coming our way. Most people don't understand that. Most people really don't have a fix on the magnitude. And I've given you a little bit of information about that in terms of what Martin Armstrong has to say and so on. And as we get closer to this, it's going to become uh, a more increasingly kind of visceral and real and uh, get away from being kind of intellectual and abstract. Uh, this is, uh, and my friend Penny Kelly just uh, had a bit of a uh, epiphany, some kind of a message that was given to her. And what they said is keep, keep your, keep your head down or, or, or that's the way I interpreted it, what she said, I'm going to, talk to her a little more, more this week so I can have a good understanding. But the point that was being made, I believe, is that uh, don't stand up, don't fight, 
keep your head down. Don't be a target. There's plenty of people who are going to fight. Carry on. And uh, it's one of the first things you learn <laughs> when you're at boot camp and uh, in the Navy or the Army or anything else is that uh, there are two people that they, there are two kinds of people those those drill sergeants or whoever they are they look for. And those are the ones that are down at the bottom and then are causing problems. And the ones that are at the top who are, you know, potentially they can give jobs to or something like that. And if you don't want to, if you don't want to get their attention, all you got to do is stay in the middle and just don't cause any problems and don't do anything. And that's really what we need to do here because we need to be around to build this new world, not to fight to try to sustain this collapsing world, which is inevitably going to implode. So with those happy thoughts, <laughs> it's gonna, this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be very, very interesting where we're going. So thanks, see you again next month.